There we go. Okay, there you go. I love it. (laughs) It's good to finally be able to see you and have a conversation with you rather than just just WhatsApp. I know. I agree. It's really nice to meet you. And I and you've done so much for my show. My God, I can't believe that much you've done for me. I mean, it's just it's incredible. And I just want to thank you so much for that. You are welcome. Thank you for all you've done for me as well. So well, this is a all new, this is a whole new, this is a whole new uh it's 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 a new medium to me, you know. Yeah. Um I've only had you've only been on television since 1980. <laughs> Off and on, mostly on. Um, but this but this is a whole new world. I mean, this is a whole new thing. And I'm not techie, you know. I missed I missed that lecture in school. So um, no, nobody is techie until they learn how to be techie. Mm-hmm. I'm techie, Neil's techie, but there was at some point in our lives where we weren't techie. We had social mm-hmm. lives and we mingled with human beings and and all that sort of oh, stuff. And that. then I, and oh, then that yeah. stopped, and we're like, we don't need other human beings. We can just, you know, type on keyboards and that's right. That's and right. things. So whenever I'm doing one of these, t- I hate the phrase interview. I don't. It always makes me uncomfortable because not I'm not going to go. Oh, so I have another question for you. Uh-huh. I I always think of them in the same way that you do with your shows. I'm guessing is just conversations. Right. You have set things in your mind that you think I'm probably going to ask that. And I'm probably going to steer them onto this, and I do have that. Uh-huh. Uh, but I always try and make them a little bit different. And your career is amazing. It's lengthy, and that's a good thing because there's so much stuff to talk about. And it's like, what do I choose? Yeah, I know. It's so, true. and there's also things that I do want to cover, like your YouTube channel and okay, things like that. You. So I'm like, how do I do that? Because the things, some of the things that I'm going to talk about are from the mid '80s, uh-huh. and the things that I know you want to talk about are from now. So I'm like, how do I blend these together? So what I've done is I'm going to do a little three segment thing, past, present and future. Oh, good. I like it. I like it. So we'll delve into the past part. That's where I'll get my questions out of the way and and geek out a little bit. Uh, How did you first get into acting? I I had read up on you and you'd done some beauty pageants. You'd won. And this was around 1980, 1979. Mm -hmm. And then... This afternoon, I was watching your very first big screen appearance, Liar's Moon, where you were. Oh, you saw me. I saw what? you with Matt, with Matt Dillon, and there was hogs running around and all that chaos <laughs> and stuff. So <laughs> let, let's go back to that first big screen appearance in Liar's Moon. What was that whole experience like, and how did you get into, how did you make the leap from beauty pageant, yeah. beauty queen, to, to being on a big screen? Well, I was in college and I did, I had no interest in, in moving to LA whatsoever. And uh, there was a, a terrible storm in Biloxi, Mississippi, the day after the Miss USA pageant and no one could go anywhere. And there were, there was no gambling or anything there. And there was nothing to do. There was the Royal D'Iberville Hotel and the convention center and that's it. Now it's Gulfport and it's this and it's that. But it, at the time there was, that's why they wanted to, focus on it so that things would money would come in there and the place would build up and it worked but there were three happy people the day after the Miss USA pageant and that was the woman that won her mother and her pageant director and everybody else just wanted to get the heck out of there okay (laughs) and so I ended up staring out the window with everybody else looking at this torrential downpour and Richard Klein came over to me who was a played Larry on Three's Company and he said, I just want to show you something. And I said, what? He goes, well, I voted for you to win all the way through. And I just want you to see these papers and see what I wrote. And you were just too young to win Miss USA. And I said, well, that's nice, you know. Um, and he goes, I want somebody that's 21. And I said, okay, well, that's, that's, that's nice to know, you know, blah, blah, blah. So my dad came over and we were talking and he said, well, why don't you have lunch with us? And so we had lunch together and he said, you want to be an actress, et cetera, et cetera. You should go to L.A. And I said, no, I'm going to New York. I wouldn't leave my family. Forget it. So I come out here for two weeks, two week vacation. That's it. Two week look, see in June, June 13th, Friday the 13th. And um, his manager uh, wanted to meet me and sent me across the street to meet an agent. And the agent wanted to sign me right then. Like, well, that's strange. I read something for him and didn't know what I was doing and they wanted to sign me. 
So then I went back up to Michael's office and he said, well, I have a couple auditions I'd like to send you out on just to see how it goes. I said, I don't even have an eight by 10 picture. So I got a national commercial that week with a Polaroid that they took. And then I got the, I got the movie Liar's Moon with no pictures, no resume, no nothing. I read for them. They liked it. I came back. I read for them again. And I called my mom and I said, they want me to do this movie in Houston, Texas. I've never been to Houston, Texas. How long does it last? Six weeks? Okay, well, you could do that and then you can come home. I said, okay, that's fine. So then they want me to be nude. I'm like, no, going home sooner than I was <laughs> planning on it. And um, this character wants, she's trying to get these boys to do something she wants them to do. So she says she's going to be changing clothes in front of a window at her grandmother's house at a certain time. And so she's, you know, taking a powder puff. So it's nothing, nothing too bad, but it just was not going to be working for me. So I remember standing there and looking across the fence at the girl that's the stand-in for me, that's the body double that I requested on the other side of the window. And I'm watching her do this. And she was from Holiday Health Spa. She was six feet tall. She didn't look anything like me. She had blonde hair. That's it. And I was standing there going, but, but, but she should be a little more, a little more sensuous with the powder puff. She should be a little more that, do you want to do it? No. Okay. Then shut <laughs> up. Tanya. And so, so that's what happened. And I ended up, I, I just, everything I did, I just guessed I had instincts and I just guessed. And the biggest mistake I made was this character um, changed her hair color constantly. And I didn't know that they said you could wear a wig. And I said, Oh God, no, I want to be authentic. Well, it wrecked my hair. When I ended up, ended that show, my hair was like a purple green color and it was this short and it had gone from this to this. So it, yeah. So I'm, I really didn't know anything. And I, I just did the best I could and I had a good time and, um, and it was amazing. I mean, it was just an amazing experience, but I was, they kept saying, you're a natural, you're a natural, you're a natural. And I had been trained in music. So that's how I ended up on soap operas because I wanted to, to feel confident in what I was doing. And um, I thought that everybody had more experience than me. And then I realized that there aren't any 20 year olds that have this kind of much experience, you know, but I thought they did. So, um, so I studied my butt off, but that's, that's how Liar's Moon happened. It was just happenstance. And then I just said, well, I'll just give it a try for a while. And I stayed 10 years. And do you um, like, do you like watching your, your early roles. Uh, when was the last time you saw Liar's Moon? God, long time ago. Long time ago. Because some people don't like what I hate watching myself on camera. Yeah. It's just like, but is it something that you get used to? I mean, I back in the, the early podcasting days, I hated hearing my own accent. I'm like, oh, God, but you've got no choice but to edit yourself and you know hear yeah. yourself, and you kind of just learn to ignore your own voice or if you don't like looking at yourself on screen, your own face or whatever. But have you have you have you always been okay with watching things back, or are you not too keen on it for whatever reason? I only I watch it from a director's standpoint. I, I watch it to critique myself and to see what works and what doesn't. Um, and in daytime, there was a guy I worked with, um, and he Bob Woods, and he had a VCR in his room. Do you remember what a VCR is? I, I, I remember having my very first VCR with the remote control with a cable. Yeah, yeah. I've um, yeah, I have fond, very fond memories of, of okay. the old VCR. Okay, so there, he had one in his dressing room that was hooked to the to the stage. Yeah. So he could record the dress rehearsals. And I thought, aha, they don't have time to give an actor direct direction on, on a soap opera. They're going boom, 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 yeah. boom. So if you watch the dress rehearsal back when they even had time to have a dress rehearsal, which I don't even think they do now, honestly, uh, it's crazy. The um, He would watch the dress rehearsal and then you would see, you know, what was a better angle for yourself? What was a better choice for yourself? What was, was this working? Was that working? You know? Um, so that when you went up to tape it, because you really only had one shot, one shot at it after a while, it was, it was it, at the beginning, 
it was much easier. And as time went on and it got cheaper and cheaper, cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, they needed to make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So you had to get everything in one shot and you had to get it the first time. And, and it, it, the only way you could get them to do another take was to say a very bad word. Yeah, Every, yeah cheaper and faster, cheaper and, and faster. Then, yep, and if it. you said a very yeah. bad word, then they'd have to cut. Yep. <laughs> was there a lot of that that go on where people go, do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring out the C word or an F bomb or a, yeah, bad, bad, <laughs> bad, bad word that they couldn't yeah. possibly get by by the uh, the, the, the standards and practices people because <laughs> the standard and practices people were very intent and they watched the show all the time and if you if they saw a tongue and a kiss they stopped it that phone would ring if you had two hips on the same sofa this way. You didn't have a foot on the ground, they'd yeah. stop it. Um, it was so funny. Standard room practice is called cut. Wait a minute, we got to get that. No, you can't, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, it was really funny. And now all bets are off. They, they really are. It's like, you can just do whatever they, you want. I think HBO are probably responsible for that back in the day with, in a cable. And then you look at The Walking Dead or something now, you're like, I can't imagine you know, like a three-year-old walking in and seeing that on the TV and right? the therapy for decades. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's what, that's what that was about. So I like watching it for, for, to, you know, to, to critique myself and to see if something's working, you know, it's not like I enjoy my, my performance. I, I can't, I can't do that. No, you're not the sort of person. It's like get some friends around. Hey, well, let's put one of my movies on. Sit down and watch. You can go to the bathroom <laughs> no! later. Oh God, no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I'm trying to figure out what to do with some of these pictures I have. There was a bar in um, in in my show called Olinoff's and One Life to Live, and they had three foot by three foot photos of me. So it's my head, and it's this big. Nice. Right? Yeah, and there were six. Of them. There were six of them. Okay, so I was in every in in I saw this the other day on Desperate Housewives because my daughter's watching Desperate Housewives now. Can you believe that? Isn't that funny? <laughs> so anyway, in um Eva Longoria's home on the show, her character has three foot by three foot pictures of her going yeah. up the steps. And I said, see, that's what that's what they did with with me. They want yeah. the, the the person as an actor and they and they want to make it seem like they've got this big ego. So they want to make it make this person be in every scene. Mm -hmm. If the camera goes this way, you see the picture of her on the stairs. You, you know, same thing that happened in, in the bar. So I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I'm like, I, uh, auction them. That's a good idea. I would auction. I'd sign them. Auction yeah. them. Oh, okay. You know. Okay. Give a percentage to charity or, or give none to charity. Forget charity, keep yourself, you know, that sort of thing. Or I could donate Plus, them to charity and they could auction yeah. them off. Definitely. Definitely. People love signatures. You know, you yeah. sign something, they'll be like, oh, I love one of them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. And then the next thing I was watching, so I've watched you three times today. The oh next God. thing where you appeared in two of my favorite TV shows when I was growing up. Uh, the first one was Hunter with Fred Dreyer. So you were in an episode of that rich girl, if I have written yeah. the episode title down, play, yeah. playing Claire. So mm -hmm. have you got any, you got fond memories of being in Hunter or was it, you think it's a, you know, it's a series. It was a tiny in, little part. Yeah. It was a tiny little part. It was, it was. Um, you got I to flirt with Fred. You got to flirt with I Hunter. Did. You got to, you know, flutter eyelashes and you got to uh, upset was, Stephanie Kramer a little bit. Who's like, Knock it off, we're at work. I know, I know. Flirting with really her. I tell you something, they've replayed that so many times that I still get phone calls from, from some friends of mine back in Baltimore that I went to school with. They're like, I saw you on Hunter again. I said, oh, good, another check for 32 cents. Yeah. It, <laughs> that, I mean, I'm in the UK. That show was huge in the UK. So many people watch Hunter. It was huge so here, were, too. It, yeah. And it was on a lot. And and it and the residuals were good for a while, but then back, after, in, back in the day of residuals, after a million years go by, you know, it just you just get like thirty, really thirty two cents. So it must cost them about three dollars to send you the check. Yeah. You know, so now they have something at SAG at the union, where if it's going to be a thirty two cent check, you can just let them keep it and they'll donate it to the actors fund. So that's what we do now. 
So at some point, if you don't get any checks for five years, somebody's getting like a dollar fifty, aren't they? It's like yeah, there they from, go. from Hunter. There they go. Yeah. But Hunter was great. And the next episode I watched you on was from TJ Hooker, which yeah, I've mentioned great. to you before. That was a good because a little bit of stunt work in that where a bomb goes off and you get sort of blown to one side. That was you that did the yeah the stunt work. What was that like? Uh, it, it, it you have to you have to have the right pads and you have to know how to do the move. And they'll show you that they have a stunt coordinator that shows you that stuff. And, um, but I love that. That was fun. I did a movie called kidnapped and, um, and I, I was working with, um, Ken Schreiner. He it just so happened. I didn't, hadn't been on GH, but we did this movie called kidnapped. And, um, I had to run with a rifle over, I had to hop over a hedge and then hop over another hedge while we're going after these people. And um, I pulled something in rehearsal. So before we could really do it, I was already injured and I injured myself. Right. So then I had to like fake it. I had to like, like, I had to like grit my teeth and do it after. The, the, in other words, the first, the, if they had only taped the dress rehearsal, it would have been great. Yeah. But they didn't. So then I had to do it just as well in the take. And I was really in a lot of pain. So um, if anybody ever sees that, that's why I'm making that face. It was hard. That was hard. But most of the stuff I've done, the stunt stuff I've done has been harmless. It's been harmless. Because that was a good one in TJ Hooker. I yeah. thought that was gone. Because I put the episode on. I knew you were in it. I'm like, right. You know, where's Tonya? Where's Tonya? And you, you know, you're talking to the senators. You're walking up the steps. I'm like, they, I mean, some would say that's a small part. I think in an episode like that, it's not a small part. It goes on for a... <laughs> A small yeah. part is somebody holding the door open, and then that's pretty much it. But it was you were you were hounding the senator, and then the, the bomb goes off, and you get blown to one side. I somebody has actually captured that little scene where the, the explosion goes off. It's on YouTube. There's somebody that collects scenes from stunts in TVs in TV shows. Oh my gosh, you're kidding! And, th- and that little scene is on there. But I saw it on the full episode because I've got all TJ. I've program. never seen it. I've never seen it. Right. I only so saw the first are. time it was on. That was it. I mean, obviously, that's not the only thing on YouTube that you're on, and we'll get to that when we talk about the present part. But mm-hmm. uh, but the past stuff, how, how much has the business changed from then to to now? We're not dipping quite into the present and future yet, but a huge amount or, or not? Well, um, hmm. Because, I mean, obviously, there's, like, streaming and all the different ways that people That's watch not, what, the, what The work itself is it's always going to be the same, um, except for this AI threat. Um, yeah. The work is the work. You know, you're a performer. You're an actor. You have to do the same um, character development, the same backstory creation, the same blocking, the same rehearsal. The sa- all of that will always be the same. I mean, that's that's... That's the way you make movies. That's the way you make television. That's the way you, do, you know. The thing that's changed is the casting process. Okay. And because, um, I mean, that's the thing I see that's changed the most. I came out here in 2020, 2020? Yeah, January 2020 for 2019, 2019. And that's when COVID hit, right? Yeah, 20, early 2020, COVID sort of so we were, pressed, we, pressed the pause button on the world. Yeah, it? so that's when I got here. And so we, that, yeah, 2020, January 2020. So everything stopped, right? And there was no meeting meeting of any humans for two years. And after that, they started allowing you to audition on screen only. So you'd have to set up something like this and find someone to read with you. So you'd have to find somebody that would come to your house, right? And read with you. And you would memorize the the work and you would rehearse with this stranger and you would guess what they wanted um, to your best of your ability and you would tape it the best of your ability and light it to the best of your ability and then on your phone, and then you would send it into them. 
So they didn't get to meet you. They didn't get to have your personality in front of them. They didn't get to see how you how you react to things that are going on at the time. They yeah. they just they just saw your guess with the reader you picked and your performance for that. And that's and it. I'm, I, I guess I'm right, but you'll be able to tell me if I am right or not. But I'm guessing that is not the ideal way to audition. It's awful. Because I hate, it. I, hate it. I, I hate it. 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 I hate it so much. Tell me what you did. So you don't I like really, it. I really, really hate it. No, I don't like it. <laughs> because no, I would you, think you that. You don't get, you got no feedback. No, no response. There's no connection. There's no, you know, you don't have any idea what they're really looking for. They put the, they, they, they write a little blurb on, on the casting notice. And then you, so-and-so's a sister of so-and-so who had an affair with so-and-so and she's mad about such and such and it's in this place and go. That's what's written down. Right. And then you have to sort of figure out, well, how does she feel about this situation, that situation? You make it up, but you don't get to ask anybody if that's yeah. the right direction that you're going. Right. So you do the best you can. And I've gotten work this way. It's not that. It's just that I hate it because I don't want to be alone. A acting is not alone, an alone job. Now, you want me to sing you a song? I'll put the tape on. I'll sing, sing the song. song. I'll knock your socks off. Okay, but acting is not a singular endeavor. No, it's acting is it's sport. reacting, isn't it? Is it acting is reacting? Yes. I think is the phrase. There's yeah, no one to react to. Yeah. There's nobody that knows what they're doing that's in the room that, that that knows what they want anyway. I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what they want. Um, there's nuances I can add, and there's things I can do differently, and 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 I feel really bad for my daughter because she's a wonderful actress and she hasn't gotten in front of people at all. And then they'll bring in these people that are influencers that are not performers, that are not actors, yeah, that have yeah. no training. And they'll cast these influencers who are not actors. And they wonder why the shows aren't doing well. And the reason they cast influencers as actors, if those influencers aren't actors, is because, oh, look how many people will look at the thing that they're in because this person has 500,000 followers. Yeah, it doesn't and really... And it's crazy. It, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really marry. One doesn't really marry with, with the other one. If you have a name in, in show business, it's because usually you've done a... a, a quality of work over a period of time and people think you're great because they know what you're doing and they love what you do right yeah. if you're an influencer what what why do they like you are you act you act crazy do you recommend cool things do you make people laugh at the at silly things that you've created yourself but, but what performance have you done what what acting have you done what 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 have you made people feel? What have you pulled out of people besides shock and awe, right? I don't, yeah. I, and that only lasts a short time online. And when you're casting somebody from, from with that criteria, how long is it going to last in a 30 minute show or an hour show? That, that, that's weird to cast things that way. I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense. Um, but they're doing it. They're doing it. Do you, do you think do you think it'll spring back or do you think this is just something that's here to stay and it may calm down a little bit, but it's probably well, not going to change? I can just tell you what I see as far as the news goes, for instance. People are starting to turn it off and they're yeah. starting to go online to find different points of view. And networks are losing people watching because... There's all these streaming services, you know, yep. um, and and the fact that things aren't staying on the air, like Blue Bloods has been on the air for a long time, and you can count on that show. Yeah, you can count on that show. I love that show. I, I think Tom Selleck rocks. I think everybody on there is so good. I think Wahlberg is great. I think they're great. Um, and it's going off the air now, and it's yep. been on like 13 years or something. Um. 
Dick Wolf came back, thank God. Good. Yeah. Oh my God, he came back from. I mean, he's got he's had a franchise for a long, long time, and then he went away for a while. Now he decided. I guess he decided. Ah, I'm bored. I think I'll have another franchise. So he owns three nights a week. He owns the Law and Order night, which I think is Thursday. He owns the Chicago night, which I think is uh, what is that Monday or. Wednesday and he and he and he owns the 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 what's the other one Chicago FBI FBI night that's yeah. the one it's Thursday so he's back he's so back <laughs> good he's so back and he knows how to hire people and he knows how to, to he knows how to write a story and have it stay on the air and have people want to see more of it and hire people that know what they're doing I love this man I I mean I've never met him but he knows what he's doing. It he was Dick Wolf is one of those names, and again, I've never met him. I don't know him. I'd like to, but I don't know him. Where if his name comes on the, the credits, you're like, oh, it's Dick Wolf show, and you can go. I'm in safe hands for the next 42 minutes or whatever. Yeah. All, Bella, all is good. And Belisario was the same way. I mean, yeah. there's just certain people that were around a long time ago that are still around, and they still know what they're doing. So was, um, uh, Belisarius, uh, Steve Botchko was another one. I'm like, oh, Steve, I would, I would actually watch a show if Steven Botchko was involved in it because I'm like, I like his other stuff. I will watch this one. That was the L.A. Law and the L.A. Law, Hill Street Blues, Blues and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, stuff like one. that. Yeah, it was yeah, just, yeah. it was just great. Um, but it's a, it's a little different now. I, I have to say. Um, but the worst that the worst thing is the casting portion for those of us who are performers. It's just it just sort of stinks, you know. Um, the thing I like about it now, though, is if you don't like it, you can fix it. If you don't like it, you can make your own thing, and it doesn't have to cost a zillion dollars, you know. Like, I'm writing something that will cost a lot of money. I'm writing an a international thriller that's got a family, wonderful family element to it, and it's it's it's, it's really great. And I've been working on it for four years now, um, and we're about ready to pitch it in May, so we'll see what happens. Discussed. Um, yeah, my partner's in Quebec, so the time difference has made it hard for me to get out. Because if I start at one o'clock, I'm in the house from one o'clock till six, seven, you know, a long time. If, if so, I've tried to work four or five hours. So I mean, it's just it's it's hard for three thousand miles, and you, it, it'd be almost impossible with somebody in England. <laughs> I mean, well. <laughs> It's sort of. I mean, I used to work nights at my non. I mean, I don't work for a filmy job anyway. I, I wish I did. But my non, my paying job was a night job, so I used to, you know, stay up all night anyway. So yeah, yeah. I, I'll be your England hub. It's fine. All right, know. all right. I could sleep in a daytime. Thank it's you. Fine. Thank you. So my my Thanks. final part of the past, and this is a question I've always wanted to ask somebody. And and it fits in perfectly with yourself. So 1988 to 1990, General Hospital. If the, if the internet is correct, that's right. Then then you're you're away from the show for then. You've gone to well, you've not, but your character has gone to, or you just disappeared, didn't you? You're like she's run off. Olivia's run off. Somewhere. No, I was in a coffin, honey. But you were in a coffin. I was dead. Ouch! That's a long time to be in a coffin. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding 26 years and then 2017 you come back uh -huh. so is that a case of you get a phone call or an email one day and it's like hi it's general hospital do you know that character you played in 88 to 90 the one that went in a coffin do you want to come back and do it again well frank's my friend he called me on the phone he's like hey tanya how would you like to come back to the show i'm like are you kidding are you kidding are you kidding me because my husband had been diagnosed with cancer and life was pretty dark and I was so happy to be asked to work again. I mean, just so happy. And I had been I had been asked to work by Frank on One Life to Live and like several times, like in 04, 2004, 2005, 2010, 2011. Um, and then the show got canceled. So it had been it had been a long time since 2011. And uh, I was so happy to go back there. But then when I got back there, 
um, I was still too heavy. I wanted to be thinner and I, because this came sort of out of nowhere, I didn't have a chance to lose all the weight I wanted to lose. My hair had fallen, a lot of it had fallen out. It was this long. Um, the nerves of having your husband with pancreatic cancer uh, and two little kids, it was really, really, really hard. Um, and But I did the best I could with what I had. And I went back there and then the story didn't it didn't make sense to me um, because we had already wrapped this up. This obsession with Duke had already been wrapped up and Olivia had gotten killed because she had fallen in love with the hero of the show and she had found that she was lovable and that someone could actually love her. And she realized what was right and wrong. And she went back to the judge to turn herself in and her, Brother thought she was going to turn him in, so he shot her in the back and killed her. Okay. Ouch. Yeah. So I, yeah. So I go back. So I go back, and she's obsessed with Duke again, and she's and she's crazy again, and she's writing these 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 terrible letters with cutouts of of we already did that. We did just so many things that 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 I knew that if I was watching it, I'd be so upset, you know. And then he said, well, a lot of people that were watching this show when you were on are dead now. <laughs> oh, is that, oh, that's okay then. <laughs> Talk about an ouch. It's like, thanks. Like, well, you make me feel wonderful. I know, right? Um, they don't know. They don't remember that. I was like, okay, if you say so. I was like, whoa. Well, there were plenty of people that remembered it. Okay. Um, and that the pe- and that the people that didn't remember it, they're not going to like me at all because they had me doing things. Olivia always had an under, an undertone of that you could identify with her pain, right? Yeah. Well, this was just plain mean. She was just plain shooting people, um, kidnapping people, shooting people, having people, you know, rah, 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 you know, and, and who wants that? Um, so I tried to play. I tried to play, you know, the same kind of pathos inside of her but I I wasn't really able to do too much with that but anyway they had said they were going to bring me back that October and um, I had gone to see a friend of mine in Texas and I was so excited and um, she wanted to show me Austin so I had never been to Texas I've never been to Austin I I really couldn't wait I've been to Houston to do that movie but that's it right So I'm down there and, and I come back and we've seen Austin in the bus and there is the, and all the cool stuff that's going on. And I went to bed and I turned on my Twitter and I saw that people were kneeling for the national anthem. And I was like, that is the most unpatriotic thing I've ever seen in my life. Why would anybody kneel for the national anthem? And so I just wrote on there, if it weren't for the soldiers that are willing to risk their lives for your ability to make millions playing a game on Sundays, you might be raking leaves somewhere. And the reason I said raking leaves is because I was trying to come up with a mundane job yeah. that would, you know, would, would evoke some sense of humility in, in you know, what that, which is what I was going for here. Don't be so proud of yourself that you think you can just on your st- on your country, right? Well, I didn't know they had a cause. I didn't know um, that there was a cause involved. I had no idea. Um, I didn't know it was an equity thing or an equality thing or a Black Lives Matter thing. I did. There was no Black Lives Matter. I didn't know anything about it. Nothing. Zero. I hadn't. It hadn't come out yet. But they were still kneeling for the anthem. Um, I immediately got called a racist and it was like popcorn in a microwave oven. So I said, you know, you might be raking leaves somewhere and then you're racist, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist. racist, racist." Well, I've got all kinds of black friends and my daughter has them at my house on the weekends and my, my girlfriend's daughter's an African-American and she, I'm, I'm her godmother more or less, um, that was there on Gotcha Day. We celebrate her Gotcha Day every year, you know, and she got adopted. Um, just, just, just stupid, you know. One of my best friends in New York. So I started to say those things, 
And then they're like, yeah, I got a black friend. Ha ha. You're a Karen. And it was so, I didn't know what a Karen was. Like what's a Karen? Um, It was devastating to me. Uh, My mother's whole side of the family. My, my grandpa lied about his age and went into the Navy when he was 14. And he was always in the service, like as long as I can remember. He was in every war. Um, and my uncle George and my cousin Ronnie and my uncle Clyde and everybody was in the service, everybody. Um, so I thought it was unpatriotic. I didn't know, you know, what know. it was about. I mean, they called, they called me the next day and they told me that, um, that they weren't going to pick up my story for October. And I asked them if it had anything to do with, um, with the tweet. And they're like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? But obviously it did. But it likely was. Yeah. And yeah. this was, well, this was what year? Like 2000, 2017. I was 2017. supposed to go back in October and I haven't been back since. And then, um, and I've had people tell me not to say anything that sounds the least bit conservative online. Yeah. And, um, it's really hard for me to, to, to not have, any conservative views when I'm a conservative person. I think it's, I mean, we, I'm guessing we both love the internet because the internet is enabling us to do this and it enables us to set up a YouTube video podcast. And so the internet is a great thing and it has lots of things about it we love. However, the internet is also a terrible, nasty place. And I think since COVID, mm-hmm. I think there was a six week period where uh, it certainly was in the UK where it was like lockdowns, right? Everybody stay at home. Two everybody, years we had that. Two yeah, years. but you know, for the first six weeks, everybody went, not a problem. We will, yep, we'll stay at home. We'll, we're fine. We will not go near anybody. We'll wear a mask. It's all okay. And then after about six weeks, I think a lot of people got bored. And they're like, oh, you can't tell me what to do. Stay inside and wear it. And it sort of, this whole bubbling under everything's a conspiracy i you know i disagree with what you say therefore you're an enemy we can't have a discussion about our different things we you're a which which side are you on which side are you on pick a side you've got to pick a side it's like no i have friends who were uh very anti-mask i wasn't like anti-mask at all i would wear one because it made no difference to me wearing one and it was fine and yes it made my glasses steam up but if it helped somebody else or made that's the else part i hated was the glasses steam it was up. horrible you're like Ugh. then i had but to get I, the kind with the pitch the little thing that you get those ones. Like that. yeah and then it felt up keeps the air inside the mask but i never fell out with these friends of mine i listened to their views and i'm thinking i don't agree with your views but well, that's okay because you probably don't agree with mine and we're still friends and we'll still listen to each other's podcasts. And I think that a lot of that's gone from the world because uh, obviously in America, it's are you Biden or are you Trump? And if you're the opposite of that, then, oh, you're an enemy. Go cool. no. Are you Xbox or are you PlayStation? Are you Star Wars or are you Star Trek? There's no, let's have a discussion about why you're this, why I'm that, and then we'll drink a cup of tea together and we'll have a nice conversation throughout the afternoon and we'll leave as friends it's all uh, and social media private you know that yeah you used to go into your little voting booth and whoever you voted for was private yeah but now it's and social media is very bad for that you know Mm -hmm. you or i could go on social media and go and we'll use the, the raking leaves as an example. You go, I'm going to, why? You could all be raking leaves, so you should stand up for the national anthem. Fair thing to say. And then people will go, oh, you're being racist. And then you go, oh, actually, I could see why you would think I was. So let me just say what I really meant was, oh, you're trying to get out of it. You've been caught. So you're, no, I actually said something. I'm now going to, thanks for teaching me the, the correct phrase. You can't, win. you can't win. So when you're going out defending yourself, they're like, oh, look, we've got her in, we've got her in the ropes. And it's like, no, we're trying to have a conversation. I didn't know and I then, had any enemies. I didn't know I had any enemies at all. Um, I mean, I never had any enemies in, in my, in my life show business wise. They're, so, key, they're keyboard enemies. 
Yeah, there I are, just, yeah. They are they are trolls online who just sit there and they will go after anybody who they just choose to go after. The problem is the big studios and the corporations go, oh, this very, very loud minority, these keyboard warriors, they're actually the majority, so we can't upset them or they won't watch our programs anymore. What do they want? That person not there anymore? Let's get rid of them. And we've seen it so much over the past few years where mm-hmm. somebody is involved. Somebody this week or last week they were a showrunner on a show that's due to come out and they've been fired because they had an only fans account apparently why would you fire a showrunner for that it's not like they're doing weird stuff on it i don't know what they were doing on it but they were they were sacked from that because the corporation's like oh, quick get rid of them so um whoever gave you the advice of maybe not be too vocal on social media I get your side because instinctively I'm like, I can say what I want. I've got my, nobody's going to suppress my thoughts. But also I understand that whoever may hire me or you or whatever can also turn around and go, we don't want to be associated with someone who is vocal in something that the minority keyboard warriors don't agree with. So it's that whole, I don't know what the balance is. I get both sides. I understand both sides, and I've been on both sides. So it's yeah. a tr- it's a tricky well, one. You. I think I think here, um, there was a trajectory established with a certain group of people, and and it was a democratic trajectory. It was po- it was supposed to be Obama, eight years, Hillary eight years and Biden was supposed to be in there eventually maybe but maybe not it was supposed to but it was supposed to go and they had it set up that way they had a plan that way long term and 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 Obama said he wanted to fundamentally change America Mm -hmm. I think that's the words he used want to fundamentally change America and um cool I guess right and I mean, it depends. Yeah, what it does. It that you so what are you going to change it into? Change? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. It sounded good at the time. It really did. I liked him. I voted for him. I thought he was great. So I was confused when I saw the vitriol with which they went after Donald Trump. And I was upset about the fact that it was clearly started by that NBC tape that he obviously didn't know he was being taped on where he said that horrible thing about grabbing women. Is this the, the grabbing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, but that was, that was saved by NBC, obviously, and then timed so that it would be released at a, at a time that was yeah. absolutely horrible for him. Mm-hmm. It was a gotcha. And it was established by the media and that kept happening and that kept happening and that kept happening. Then it, then it started to be by the courts. You know, I think that anything you have to do with Stormy Daniels is disgusting. Okay. But how many of these other guys have had situations with, with prostitutes or hookers or somebody else's wife that don't get reported, that don't get put out there for the world that don't that don't get that attention i don't know i mean I don't, I, of, I don't have the numbers but i would say it's probably quite a lot it's, <laughs> it's been happening thing. since shakespeare was writing about it with the king this and king that you know i mean it's been yeah. happening for years i don't know why we needed to i mean we know that that and I love John Kennedy, but we know that things were created for him to be able to sneak yeah. women in and out of the White House, and no one reported that ever. No, because we now live in, as we touched upon in 2017, we now live in a world where it's teams polar. We live in a polar, and it's not just America. We're like that here in in the UK. I don't what, understand the point of it. What's the point of it? I mean, are we are we trying to ruin people on purpose? Because it seems like we are. Yeah, we're taking we're taking the worst possible thing that they've ever done, and we're making everybody in their world know about it. Um, now the problem with Trump, 
the biggest problem with Trump. <laughs> Yeah. Trump, there are, there are his few. mouth, <laughs> his own mouth, because he will say things and you're like, please don't say that. Don't say that. Yep. You look at the TV and you're like, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. But and he he'll say, it. <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, God, my husband, and I would sit there and go, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And a lot of people I've talked to did that. They'd, they'd watch him talk and they liked everything he said up to this point. And then it would be like, oh, God, don't, don't please don't say that. And um, that was that was a shame, you know. And and after he won New Hampshire, uh, he he did not need to trash Nikki Haley. That was rude. And whenever you treat women or say bad things about women, and you're a big tall guy, you look like a punk. You look like a jerk, you know. Yep. And I decided I don't want him, you know. I don't. I'm sick of saying shut up to somebody that should know yeah. better. The, the, the things he said, he should know better, right? We had, to, we had the same problem in the UK and Boris Johnson was our prime minister for a while. He was he was a wannabe Trump. He was sort of like someone who looked up to Donald Trump going, I want to be just like you when I grow up. You know, he had the same crazy hair and the same, I'll say whatever I want. And he, and he won. And then he broke loads of rules and he had to get kicked out. And now we've got another idiot, an unelected one in... <laughs> I run in our country. One? You have an yeah. unelected one? We, we have an unelected uh, prime minister who was fined for breaking COVID rules and he was having parties whilst everybody else was locked down. And he still he, he became prime minister after being fined by the police for breaking the COVID rules that he helped set out. So it's, it you know, people go, oh, look, look America's in chaos. You're like, so the UK, so are many countries. There was it's, a, it's very there was polarized. A hidden, there was a hidden camera in San Francisco, I guess it was, where Nancy Pelosi went to get her hair done during COVID. And they show her with no mask, walking in, getting her hair done. It's like a black and white camera that's way up here. I don't know if you guys saw it on the news over there. And it was like, you know, okay for the, but not for me kind of <laughs> yeah. thing. And, and, and she, she was getting her hair done during COVID when everybody else was not allowed to do anything, you know? Um, and I, I, I understand, I understand why people get angry about that stuff. Yeah. The entitled thing. Um, Gavin Newsom went to this restaurant that I don't know if I could afford to set a foot in called the French laundry, um, with like 12 of his best friends, all of them sitting around having this ridiculously expensive, I mean, super duper duper uber expensive dinner. Um, I guess it's in Napa or San Francisco. I really don't know. Um, but he got in big trouble for that um, because we weren't allowed to go out and do anything with anyone. And he was at this big, you know, yep. um, I hate mandates of any kind. I think that's sort of not freedom. I, but I also think that going after people for talking is really, really awful and dangerous. Um, yeah. And and I and I just I wish people would listen to some information about how Marxist Mao, there's a woman that I, I saw interviewed who has just written a book about what the Chinese called the cultural revolution that took place during Mao. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they started by pitting people against one another, which which mm -hmm. weakens a country because people are fighting with one another. So that sounds, we, sounds familiar, doesn't it? We're, yeah. we're, we're walking down familiar territory here. And yeah. then and then they started trying to control what people said and they would arrest you for saying things that were wrong. They would arrest you for worshiping in places you shouldn't be worshiping and um, choosing gods that you shouldn't be choosing. Um, they wanted you to do work that they wanted you to do. Yep. And, and it became, it became more and more restrictive, 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 restrictive to the point where she says, um, and I wish I could think of her name. Um, but, but I, I should look that up and send it to you. But she, but she's talking about the, the danger of what happens when they try to separate people within the family too. Like like, yeah. the, the fa like the kids start 
thinking this way and the parents think this other way. So that family starts to get decimated and, and diluted and, and the neighborhoods become segregated and diluted. And, and, and it's just, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening right now, you know, and the media only reports what they are told to report. Yeah, they they, they yeah. slant their news to to, to 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 please their their employers, their bosses, the people that own the company. I mean, so, I I always think don't get your news from one source. Look at several different news channels and then blend them all together, and you'll get a general overview of what is possibly going on. But even then, does you're still missing things. Well, it's, we don't, you know, don't have don't just watch one. Independent in, in a, independent news companies do not have the amount of resources that these huge conglomerate networks have. They just don't have the money that they have. And they've been bought by a number of people that have a direct impact on what news is covered and what is not covered. So there are there are so many people that I mean, Adam Schiff, I'm going to say his name, <laughs> got in front of people in Washington, D.C. and was proven to have lied to Congress by Horowitz, who was a special counsel here, and um, Mueller, Robert Mueller. None of the stuff that he swears he saw, that he swears was proof of all this Russian collusion, and I'm not saying I'm a Trumper, I'm just saying I'm a media lover and I'm a free speech lover and I'm all about free speech <laughs> and for somebody to to try to take the votes of people away because they don't like the way the thing turned out well tough how many people have been president that I didn't give a crap about you know and and I just had to wait it out I had to wait it out and that's just the way it goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes yeah. you lose, you know, buck up, right? <laughs> so so he, he gets up and says that he's got absolute proof that these horrible things happen and they're disgusting things. And we find out that the dossier was written by um, Christopher Steele as a propaganda piece for Hillary Clinton and the DNC, and it was paid for by them. And that all of this stuff, there's absolutely no proof of any of it, right? And therefore, the impeachment has to be thrown out twice. Well, now he's on TV right now in California saying, I stood up for democracy. And he's, and he's running against Steve Garvey, who was a really big time baseball player over here. Yeah. Now, I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, but if you're a liar. <laughs> Get out. You're supposed yeah. to be gone. You're supposed you if you if you lie to Congress, that's a felony. You're supposed to be gone. Bye. Uh, I I'm currently under the rule of a prime minister that has been caught lying many times, and he then became prime minister. So I, I don't understand what's just, going on it in the world. It blows crazy. my it blows my mind. Uh, yeah. But it it is a very polarizing world. I think we do still have freedom of speech. It's just with freedom of speech, it also comes the consequence of a company going. Yeah, well, we can now react to your freedom of speech. So we're not going to put you in jail for saying what you did or tweeting what you did or Facebooking what you did. But we're not going to renew your contract. And I think that's that happens way, way too many. How many times has somebody been accused of something and then they get they lose everything and then it comes out, oh yeah, they, they didn't do what we accused them of anyway, yeah. but they've already been uh, you're, you're, found you're really guilty not, by and, the Twitter court. And you're not really allowed to to like change your mind or no evolve, no you can't you, no no, you know? you, no i mean i've evolved no. to the place where i really like robert kennedy jr i think he's amazing yeah um the problem we have is that do you want if we don't if we don't come together and choose somebody that's not what we've got we're going to end up with what we've got and what we've got has made the world and my view catch on fire so um it's very scary you know all the crime we have now and the 
the economic tre tre trepidation that people are in all over the country, um, the expense of things, um, the, the wars all over the world. We really need to be sure that that we that we get somebody in there that won't either won't allow it to happen or that is crazy enough or scary enough to keep people from taking those chances or that's a good diplomat that really knows I think Kennedy would be great at that um you know there's there's a lot of people that would be very good for us um but something has to change because clearly things have gone down the toilet and we've got 8 million yeah. people here and we don't know who they are. And that's really frightening. That's really scary. And our cities are going to hell in a handbasket. And I'm sorry, fire me. I, I mean, go to New York and tell me it hasn't gone to hell in a handbasket. Go to San Francisco and tell me it hasn't gone to hell in a handbasket. It has. So someone needs to change. Something needs to change. And I think a lot of things need to change. And, um, I don't, I'm not saying Trump is the solution. I'm just saying that something needs to change. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's the thing, is it? I think that's probably the best answer, isn't it? Something needs to change. What does something? Move on. Next question. Yeah, something yeah. needs to change. It really yeah. does. And, and we have to go with the people we're given. We've always had, for the past several years, we've had the choices haven't been great. Same here in the UK. We've got an election this year as well. We can have person number one who we don't really want because, you know, he's he's a liar and he's, you know, yes, and then no. or we or we can have person number two who just nods and says whatever he thinks we want to hear. I don't really want either of those two. Oh, no, you've got to pick one of them. I don't know. You might as well that's, just flip that's a coin. The, that's the problem. That's the yeah. problem. I mean, we haven't had for several years now. We haven't had great choices. Um, and And that's, you know. That's just the way it is. And and I and I would and I would think that the reason that's true is because who wants that job? I wouldn't. Not in this day and age. <laughs> I mean who I, wants that job? I would, but I wouldn't last very long, I think, because I would say do a lot of things that people are like, We're cancelling you for that one. I'm like, I really don't care. I'm gonna do these things, I'll change stuff, I'll I'll stir stuff up. Just do what I do. Just think, you know what, the world outside could stay there. I'm just gonna go watch Roadhouse and Predator and Die Hard. And these. I've gone back and I'm just re-watching old movies because they're my comfort zone. It's like, the, dude, the modern world can just go away. I'm going to watch some Patrick Swayze movies. And, oh, I loved him. And, and things like that. Wasn't what, he wonderful? He was loved wonderful. Him. Again, there's a remake of Roadhouse coming out. I think it looks quite good. It Why won't... would they do that, though? It was perfect the way it was. Well, yeah, but it won't erase the original one. It's got Jake Gyllenhaal in it. He's a good actor. Oh, we like him. He will be good. We like him. But the internet was mad. They were like, how dare they remake a classic? Firstly, the Patrick Swayze film, I love it dearly. It's not a classic, really. It's not Casablanca or White Christmas or anything, but it's a great film. And why remake it? It, it came out in 1989. Come on, seriously. It's okay to remake Roadhouse. It's okay to remake The Crow. It's fine. It won't erase the other one. But the internet is like, get it. <laughs> they just they need to chill out, I think. Yeah, I understand. What they need to do is watch this new YouTube show called One Date to Love. Oh, mine! It, it would chill them out, wouldn't it? Thank you. It does chill people out. We have a lot of fun on that show. And do you do you find it looks? It's a very relaxing show to watch. It's a very interesting show to watch. Is it as relaxing? It's having all, yeah, It's like pulling up a chair at lunch with me and my friends. It really is. It's exactly the same. If we were having lunch somewhere and, and we were going to kibitz about the things that happened at work or the things that happened in your marriage and that things, how things go with your family. Um, God, I can't find a date. I've been on these stupid dating sites and it totally <laughs> sucks. Or I fell in love with this guy and it turns out he was such a con artist. Or or I'm falling in love with people that live in the Netherlands. I don't know how many hours is that my prayer. You, know? you need to just why put do your I need to leave the country to find somebody that I want to fall in love with? You know. You need to um, just put your search parameters down to Florida because you've got a thing about Floridians. I do have I a thing about Florida. <laughs> I want to retire in Florida. 
Um, yeah. Hi there, you look nice. Are you from Florida? No, go Bye. away. Hi, okay, yeah. okay. That's a good idea. <laughs> I could put Florida in there. And then, but then they'd have to figure out why do you want to go out with me if you live in California and I live in Florida? And, and I'm like, well, that's a good question because I'm willing to fly. I'm willing to fly yeah. to see you, vice versa. Um, there's the, the, the original idea was a, I wanted to be a sitcom about. Um, I wanted to make a, write a sitcom about about my. Okay, okay, are we out of time? No, I'm fine if you are. Okay. So, yeah, we're so, running by your clock. Okay. All right. So there was a there was a there was a. In 2019, I was going to take my children on a cruise, and they, uh, Ed and I had promised, and so we were going to take them on a cruise, and. Um, so I flew them both to the Marriott out here and we stayed in a, we have a lot of timeshares with them. So we stayed in the timeshare and, um, they came in to see me in the morning and they said, mommy, when we get on the cruise ship, you're going to have to get two rooms. And I said, guys, this is going to cost me a lot of money. Why do we need two rooms? Because you snore like a train. <laughs> and I said, I do not, I do not. And they said, you do, and nobody can sleep. Nobody could possibly sleep with you. Now, this is devastating. Do you know and what I, said, I think? I think they snore, and they didn't want you to realize that they snored, so they were going, oh, it's you that snores. That's what I, I think they were. I wish that that could conspiracy, have been true. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. I wish theory, they could yeah. have been true because they taped me. Or they taped them. No, it was only one. I'm trying to bail you out here, Tonya. It didn't, didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. So I had to. So I had to get this. So I had to get. So so I had to get two rooms, and I had to go to a sleep apnea place, and blah 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 blah. So my idea of sleep apnea was I had my my stepdad. You know, I'm not home that much, so I remember my stepdad's first like foray with this CPAP machine was this big over the face. I thought of it looked like Hannibal Lecter. So I go to sleep and I wake up in my dream. Okay, I'm in my dream and I'm like in love with this man and we come home from this wonderful day and and we have this great date and I'm finally in love with somebody. We went sailing, we had the best time. We come home, it gets romantic. We go to sleep and then I have to wake up myself because I have to go in the other room, find my machine, sleep on the sofa, hide, put it back, get back in bed, get my makeup on, blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm thinking, oh my God, now I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna be so tired. I'm gonna be so tired. I'm just gonna wanna, I'm just, oh my God. So I get, so I get up in my, in, in my dream and I'm absolutely exhausted. And he gets up and he's like, oh honey, it's so good to see you. I'm like, oh, hi, how are you? And I've got my eyes like held open with toothpicks. And and he makes breakfast and then he's get ready, gets ready to leave. And I'm like, oh, we had the most wonderful time. Bye. I love you. And he leaves and I go over the sofa and I just pass out completely, just like conk. And then the phone rings and it's him. I'm coming over. We're going to go back out on the boat. I changed my mind. I canceled my plans. We're going to go back out again. And I'm like, oh, my God. No. <laughs> so this was right. So this was my this was my scene that I wrote in my head from from this experience with the kids. So I wanted to get a talk show with people calling in with all these funny stories about dating at our age, dating like over 40, like dating now, you know, because it's totally different dating after COVID, something like that. Well, I wanted to, I really thought it would be fun, funny, you know, and I didn't need to have celebrities on the show. I just wanted people to call me with their, with their true stories, you know? Well, then my friend who has a show, her name is Cindy Gross, and she has a show called Cindy and Friends, and she's great. Um, she said, you know, you've got to have so, so, so people on because that's your audience. Those are the people that know who you are. And I said, but, but I, I don't know. I, I think I'm getting away from that. She goes, no, 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 not, not a good idea. I said, so, okay. She goes, so call it soaps are not, so dating is not a soap opera. I said, no, I can't, I can't do that. So, um, cause I had all these really cool names for the show. So, um, I decided I would come up with a name that sounded a little soapy, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, that's how I came up with one day to love. Cause it only takes one day to fall in love. Right. So 
I had, so I started having people on the show from soap operas. And when they come in, I don't have any notes. I don't have any, anything. I know these people. So it's just talking, you know, like you said. And yeah. it's a lot of laughs and it's personal because I know these people, I've known these people forever. And I'm getting to see people that I haven't seen in eons. So it's really, really fun. It's like old home week. Um, that's what we should call the show, old home week. Spin-off, a spin-off, you know, there's lots of like, Dynasty Hud Knots landing, there's all sorts, you could do a spin-off <laughs> show, do lots of shows. Yeah, but I really do, I really have enjoyed it, you know. And um, and you've got 11 episodes at the minute that are on yeah, your channel. now I've got 12, I just did another one with, uh, another with, one. Martha, with Martha Byrne, yeah. And I think, because I'm South UK, uh, so I'm not familiar with a lot of the names that are on there, but that doesn't make the conversations any less interesting. Oh, good, good. Uh, and it is just like watching two people or three people having a conversation about something that affects everybody. And you go, I'm just going to hang out, get some snacks and some drinks. I'm just going to sit and watch these three, two people talk about yeah. stuff and have a laugh. And it does work. Thank I think you. the length of the show is perfect. Uh, I think the format of the show is perfect. You're now an audio podcast as well as a, a video podcast, so you're pretty much everywhere. And uh, you you are still enjoying the episodes as much as when you were doing the early ones. Well, I have to pay for that studio, so I have to wait a little bit till I, you know, gather enough sponsors to, to do it again. So it'll take, take me about two more weeks, I think. Yeah. Um, I really love being in the studio. Um, I love Zoom, don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's just that I really miss being in front of yeah. a camera. I really do. I miss the camera and the makeup people and the lighting people, and I miss all that. Um, and I love in person, you know, I'm an in-person person. Same um, thing. so I would like it better if if I if I could have people in person, you know. I I do a lot of um in-person interviews with filmmakers. And during COVID, obviously that wasn't a thing. So yeah. it all became Zoom. And I like Zoom because I can go, oh, I've got an interview in 10 minutes. Put the computer on, put the headset on. Hello, how are you? Tell me about your yeah. new film. But there's something more special about sitting down next to an actual person. Oh. You're not you're not busy going, have I got the lighting set up? Is it still recording? How long have I got left? You're just going, I'm going to talk. And I'll instinctively know when this person needs to go on to do something else. And there is something... And it would be the same with the auditioning in person. You're not busy watching technology because yeah. that distracts from a conversation. So I tend to just, I'll, I'll sometimes check on the technology, but I just ignore it and go, well, hopefully it's working. Well, how did you get into doing what you're doing? I have always been a film fan since I was a kid. I used to take myself off to the movie theater at seven years old, eight years old, go off and watch like the cat from outer space the superman the movie and just on my own and oh. i'd spent all day in a movie theater uh i had like a bit of a not a great childhood so i would just always go in my bedroom and watch tv and i moved to england managed to escape my life in scotland moved down to england when i was 15 still a big film fan uh, i'll give you a very quick quick tour here got a part-time job in a video store got a full-time job in the same video store, became the manager of the video store and then owned the video store. And then in 2003, when the rental market went by, it's not profitable anymore. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to close the video store. And so I decided to just start up a podcast in 2011. Thought I'll do six episodes because I'll get all my movie stories out the way and then I'll be done. But then things kept happening. I'd watch more movies. I would, you know, go on Twitter and speak to people. and just, I would sort of end up being able to hang around with the people that make the films who would go, well, you're very passionate about what you do. You know quite a lot about what you do. You're pretty good at what you do. So hang out with us. And that's awesome. And, uh, that's pretty much how it's. And video podcasting is kind of new to me. I've always done audio. I find audio easier, but I'm I'm getting used to the video side of things. Yeah, I right. like the connection. Yeah. You know. And I um, do. And if it was acting, you know, it would still be more of a connection than it is when you're reading with someone. Yeah. And you're playing another part. Yeah. And and they're not an actor. You just got 
you know, whoever's kind enough to come to your house and do this for nothing, you know, um, but that's, that's the hard part about the auditioning thing now, you know, um, but I do, but I do really enjoy talking to people. I love people. People are my favorite thing. Um, and, uh, and, and I like, I like conversation, obviously. Same. Yeah. So what? So a very, very sort of short one. Otherwise, it messes my whole trilogy up. So we've covered the past. We've covered the present. What are your plans for the future? And obviously, that can be to do with your your YouTube show or just things in general. What's What's in Tonya's future? I don't know. I don't know. My my uh, my prayer is that God will give me something that'll make me make me light up inside. You know. Um, I uh, I. I feel like I need to do something about this free speech thing. Um, I feel like I need to do something about the the media not covering the news. <laughs> um, so so I'm interested in that. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to look, um, but I've been talking to some people that are pretty important about it, and I'm going to see what they if they have something that they want me to do. There's, there is one man in particular who wants me to write a newsletter and he thinks it would do really well and that I should do that. So I can see myself doing that. It's not newsletter, about- website, podcast. I think the problem, and I'll, I'll use you as an example because you're a better example, or maybe me as well, is I personally can't get cancelled because I don't earn any money from what I do. Nobody employs me to do podcasting. Nobody puts money in my bank account. Go, we need your show. We rely on your show. So I don't, I'm not beholden to anybody else to pay my bills. So I could go on Twitter and go, all politicians are idiots and you're all stupid and you're brainless like sheep or, or whatever, to use that as an example. So I couldn't get cancelled. But if I was reliant on a Disney or a Warner Brothers or, a, or a, uh, whoever else, Universal, give them a shout out, then I would definitely be, maybe I'm not going to say that because my money tap will get turned off and then I can't pay my bills and I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the well, difference. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not interested in saying anything tremendously controversial. No. It's, 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 I mean, I could, but I know better. Than <laughs> You're like, no, I've learned that one. I know no, better than don't, that. Don't doing it. Yeah. Um, when I, when I was in journalism school, you're not allowed to have an opinion. You're supposed to have, you know, who, what, when, where, why, and how that's it. You know, yeah. no adjectives who, what, when, where, why, and how, and that's it. Right. Yeah. Um, so that we need more of that, you yeah. know, and, and, um, and then things just need to be reported. Things that are going on need to be reported, and they're not. You know, they're not. A lot of them are not. And the, and the things that are being chosen to be reported are meant to gather people and push them over in this direction. And that's not right. And and that's dangerous. You know, I think so. Maybe th- maybe there'll be a place for me in that world. I also have this wonderful series. It's a thriller. That's really fun. It's going to be a limited series. It's very filmy, very much a film. It's just a series. Um, and we're going to pitch that in May, and that takes a lot of time. Um, I have a new movie that's going nice. to be screening tomorrow night. In what's LA. that called? What's what's the movie called? This episode called may be out, so it'll probably. Have- could be out after the movie was screened, but what was the movie that screened tomorrow? But it's after just for the cast tomorrow, it's just for the cast. It's not ah. really out out. It's called the Last Culprit, and um, and it's about a group of killers that go to meet in one particular place for a particular purpose, and I have to leave it there. Um, but I get <laughs> to play a killer again, so Ooh. that was fun. Yeah, I know. I always play the same darsh thing. Um, but, but you this, do it well. You play it well. That's the main thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, people used to say <laughs> this. One lady at the Woolworths used to say, you know, when I went in with my mom one time, she goes, "You drink milk? You're buying milk. You drink milk?" And my mom said, "What do you think she drinks? Blood?" Because um, that's when I was on General Hospital, and I was just evil at the beginning, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so that's that's that. That's cool. And then I have a television show called Destination Heaven that I did uh, a year ago in the springtime. And it didn't get on the air because it was supposed to be the 
the last episode of the series. And when the network that saw it, saw it, said they wanted to put it on first. And the producer said, no, it's supposed to be the last one. And um, so that's sort of in a limbo sort of state. But I got to work with Harry Lennox and Doug Jones. And nice. I just, yeah. oh, God, what a lucky girl I was, you know. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I want to do more of that. I'd like to do more theater too, you know? Um, so I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much up for whatever I can do. That's, it's going to feed my soul and make, maybe make a difference in the world. That's what I'd like. So what I said, what's planned for your future? Like, oh, I don't know. And then you like theater, movies, TV, making a difference. <laughs> so you ended up, you ended up coming out with, with a bit of a shopping list, including milk, not blood. And a, and, a book, uh, and a book. No, but you book. have to, yeah. this, things have to pay. You know, I have to make a living. Yep. So I have to figure out what's going to pay me, you know? Exactly. But I enjoy watching what you do. I've enjoyed our, our WhatsApp conversations and, and whatnot. But it's nice to finally be able to virtually connect through the through the you, interwebs. You helped me so much. I'll never forget it. I can't You're believe welcome. you 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 figured out how to get me out there with the podcast and how to how to just everything. I mean, you just really have helped me so much. And I didn't know how to do that until I learned how to do that. So you oh. said at the beginning you weren't very techy. I I had no clue. I was so close to going. I'm not doing any podcast because I can't work out how to sound clip, how to edit something. I really couldn't. It took me all afternoon to cut a little piece out didn't know how to do it now I can have a show online within 20 minutes of of finishing it video takes a little bit longer than audio but uh well I have to learn that one that's the one I really have to learn yeah I could teach you that one it's I'll I'll be your Obi-Wan Kenobi you can be the I think you have to come over here to do it I don't think it's something you can show me on tv I'll send you lots of screenshots and how-to videos and Uh, all right all right and uh but yeah what's your plans for what's your plans for the rest of the day um, I've got another, um, I've got to eat lunch. I haven't eaten all day. Dude. And, uh, and then tonight I'm going to go to something. I don't know what I haven't decided. I've got a couple invitations and then tomorrow I'm going to drive up to Newport beach and I'm going to stay at a beautiful hotel on the ocean. It's going to nice. be cold, but I don't care. Um, and then I'm going to chill out a little bit and then go see my, my screening and then come back the following day for St. Patrick's day. It's a big party. I've got Send me a pic- send me a picture of the ocean because I haven't seen the ocean for way too long. All right, so, I will. Send me a photo of the ocean. I will. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for taking the time out to do this. Oh. It's, I've I've had a blast. Totally my totally my pleasure. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'll we'll have to get you back for a sequel at some point, or you get me back for a sequel. Oh, I've left out a lot of stories, so well, I love I, I would love to do it again. Okay, God same. bless you. Right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.